Hey guys, Caleb here with Camera Foundry. Welcome to this overview video for the A10 Mini DIY case kit. In short, we built and sold 20 custom limited run A10 Mini cases. Uh, those are still out in the field doing their thing, but we've had to discontinue future production just because of time, resources, finding the PCB boards to make it all work. That said, we had a lot of extra parts, so I'm actually putting together some DIY kits so you can build something like this. A DIY case for your A10 Mini, and everything you see here is included with exception to the Pelican case itself, your A10 Mini, but this insert, here I have another one in white, will come with a case. It also comes with a bunch of different power connectors and cables, and we're gonna go through all of that in this video and talk about everything you need to build your own A10 mini case. So again, this is for the base that goes in the bottom of the case. You'll need a monitor if you want one at all, and the Pelican 1170 case. So without further ado, let's do an overview of this kit what it comes with, how it works, and how you can install your A10 Mini. Okay, so here is the base and how it will ship. It'll come with some other goodies we'll show you in a second, but this is how it comes kind of pre-installed. You can either just remove these two clamps, throw your A10 in, put it in a case, and you're done, or open this thing up and do all kinds of wild stuff using the connectors that we're going to ship with it. And this thing is designed to work with the Pelican 1170 case. So here's an unmodified one. You will need to make a cutout in the back of the case. We'll talk about that in a second to get this guy installed. So now let's talk about what comes with this kit and then we'll get into all of the nitty gritty when it comes to installing your A10 mini case. So here we have the base itself. As you can see, it's going to ship fully assembled with exception to a couple things that you can add yourself. If I flip it over, you can see that this thing will drop into the bottom of an 1170 case. We also are including mounting points. So you could just slip this in there and it's a pretty tight fit uh, and add a little bit of glue or you can go ahead and drill holes in the bottom of the case and bolt it up. Along all the sides of the case, you'll see these little grooves which are designed to perfectly slide in to the track guides built into the case. So it is a really custom fit, really proud of how well that turned out. On the top here, you'll notice we have the clamps here on the left and right that hold your A10 Mini in place. We'll take a look at that here in a second. We also have the face plates, which wrap around in kind of an L shape. And there is two vents here, an intake and an outtake or blower fan, and there are fans in here. So this will ship with two fans pre-installed. There's also a power switch in the middle, which can be wired up to pretty much anything you'd like. And there's routing for cables throughout the whole case. We're gonna look at all of that here in a second, but first I want to talk about what else comes with this kit. So here's the main, you know, star of the show, the actual base. I'll set that aside and we'll talk about some of the wiring harnesses that come with it. So the first is going to be a simple XT30 connector. This connects to the power switch. So there's actually a little connector down in there. So this can plug in there and then you can wire up anything to this power switch. There's also a DC angled pigtail cable and this can be used to power your ATEM. So it'll actually plug right in there loop around and down and into the case. And there's actually a cutout right here for this cable. And then you can wire it up to the switch or anything else. We'll be including two of these DC female connectors. And these can actually slide in both here and here on the case for a power in and power out or however you wanna wire them up. Similarly, I have a 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch audio jack TRS, and we have all the wires nicely stripped here so you can solder that to a monitor. So if you're running HDMI to an external monitor and you want to run the headphone jack from that monitor down through the back of the case, this will actually slip in right here in a custom spot for that connector, and then you can use headphones with your case. We'll also be including a 3.5 millimeter cable that is stripped and ready for soldering, as well as an unmodified 3.5 millimeter cable. So you can do whatever with these two if you want to at all. And you'll notice also on these cutouts here, we have spots for HDMI cables and just extra room to do whatever you want here. Already installed, we have a female to female HDMI coupler right here, if my camera decides to focus. And this thing goes inside of the case and you can run HDMI cables 
through and back out or to a monitor, whatever you want to do through the cutouts. And that brings me to dismantling this thing so we can see what's inside, how it works, how you can route cables, and what else you can do with this guy. So I'm going to start by removing these four screws that hold the clamps for the A10 Mini. I would recommend using hand tools for this so you don't crack anything. This is a very durable plastic. It's PETG, but it is, you know, still plastic, so we don't want to crack things. And then you will need a couple Allen keys to get this thing dismantled. So I've got those removed. I'll set them right there and there. We'll take our A10 mini case and you could at this point just slot it right in, take your clamps, reinstall them, and you're off to the races once you've modded your case, boom. Everything's nice and snugly fit in there. But we're gonna carry on with the dismantling of this guy to see what's inside. So if you wanna remove the A10, you take those clamps off. They are keyed, so if I flip one over, you'll see there's a kind of a keyed shape there. So they really lock in nicely here and they're not gonna slide all over the place. To remove the ATEM, you can stick your thumb in the little thumb groove back here and remove it just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the base down here at the bottom. Set that aside. Now you can see down into the bottom of the base. So there's lots of room down here for running cables, HDMI cables if you wanted to use that coupler. Uh, and then we also have these two cables for the fans. So there are two fans installed. One is an intake, which is right here. It's going to suck air in, pull it around the inside of a little tunnel here. And there's an opening that lines up perfectly with the intake of the A10 Mini. So there it is right there. Then it's going to go through the A10 Mini because there's a fan inside of this guy. He's pulling all that air across and he's going to spit it out on this side. That is going to be pulled by a fan that's right here through another gap right there. And there's another kind of piping that runs through the side of the case and then pulls or pushes air out here. So you've got two fans. Honestly, this is overkill, but it's darn cool. So if you want to use both, you can. If you just want to use one, I would recommend pulling air through the exhaust and just not using the second one. But we're including both. Some of these cases will also come with a air filter. You'll see that in a little bit. Some will not. Unfortunately, we don't have enough. And the last thing is you can customize the length of these cables. You can just fold them up uh, or cut them. There are resistors built in so that the fans are a little more quiet, but you can change the speed if you want. And at this point, I'm also going to throw in our connectors since we have access to those connectors. So I'm going to grab my audio uh, 3.5 millimeter. I'm going to loosen that just a little bit, the little nut on here. And I can simply press that down right there into that slot. I'll lift it up so you can see a little better. There it is, nice and tightly snugged in there. Pretty slick. Next, we'll install our power connectors for this. Loosen the nuts until they're just about to fall off. And then these perfectly slide right in there. Then I can tighten up the nut and the same thing on the other side. I'll just drop it in there and tighten up the nut. So now we have our connectors in place. You could also take this angle DC connector and he has a nice little spot right there in this cutout. There's also, excuse me, as I drop that, a cutout here and here. You could put a little red USB 2.2 amp little board in there if you wanted a USB type A connector on the back. There's also a spot here that works really well with an HDMI ribbon cable, which can work with the HDMI output on uh, this connector here. If you want to see kind of how you could go about that, you can watch both my original A10 mini case as well as the overview for the case that we sold. We sold 20 of them and you'll see how that worked. But you can do that or not, whatever you want. From there, you can use hot glue, black hot glue would work really well, or some kind of tape to go across here and cover all that stuff up. So let's carry on with the dismantling of the case and talk about some other features and some ways to route cables. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these four corner screws and these four screws right here next to the power switch. All right, so I've removed all those screws. We're going to lift up the left and right top plates. Do keep in mind there are screws and washers there, so don't lose those. And now you can see the inside of the air ducts here. So we've got a fan here, fan here, and we've got some uh, dust filters. Now these will not come on all of the cases. We only have enough for a certain amount. I can't remember exactly how many. Uh, so keep that in mind, yours may not come with these, but as you can see here, it's about an eighth inch, uh, quarter inch, or so, you know, little foam. So you can see they're really thin here. And you can just buy these on Amazon, cut them up with scissors. So they just rest here on these little platforms on either side. 
And that is the inside. Now, while we're here, you'll be able to see the cable routing on the side of the case. So see this little cover here? You can grab a screwdriver and stick it into the side here and just pop up this little cover like so. There we go. That's what that looks like. And this guy is going to cover up this huge area here for routing cables. So let's say you want, you know, the HDMI out of your ATEM to run through here. You could run it through here, up inside of the side of the case, and then out through this spot right here. So if I put this piece back on, you'll see that there's a little spot here for a cable to go into the lid of the case to a monitor or something like that. There's also a spot here, um, which goes into this little trap door you can pull out. See what that piece looks like right there? That slides in right here um, to keep air from getting into the case this way. And that's how the cable for the fan gets into this chamber. But you could run other stuff there. You could punch a hole through the side here. There's actually one already right here. Uh, if you wanted to use like a cold shoe on the side of the case. Uh, so you could run cables all over this thing and then just reinstall this little trap door like that. So a lot of options, uh, but I did want to show this particular one here because this is a great way to get power and HDMI up into the lid of the case. If you do do something like that, I would highly recommend the mono price cables. They're really, really thin. I talked about them in my original A10 video. So like a foot, foot and a half would do a great job of running wherever you need to run it. So at this point, we're going to put it all back together. We're gonna to install it into a Pelican case and get this party started. So let's go ahead and start by reattaching some of these parts. So I'm going to take the cable cover here. I'll go ahead and slide that in place. It kind of clicks down until it is nice and flush with the rest of this piece here. We can now reinstall the fan filters if they come with your case, just like that. They just kind of rest in there. Now I'll grab the two side pieces and add them back in, tighten them down. Of course, you'd wanna run your cables before that. And when adding these, just loosely tighten them so don't go all the way down to fully snug because we're gonna to want to slightly adjust these when we get them in the case because if you can see here, they can move around a little bit and this will really help us make a nice tight fit in the case because once it's in, we can butt this thing up against the side of the case and snug it up. Right, so now that we have the sides on, we can take our cover here and install it. I'm just gonna pretend we had soldered a bunch of stuff down here, but of course you don't have to do that at all if you don't want to. So we're gonna slide this in, make sure it's in the correct orientation. It'll want to only fit one way, and you can see we want a nice flush spot for the ATEM to rest. So I'll go ahead and tighten those up. It's okay if it's a little bendy and loose there because the ATEM is gonna hold it in place. We can throw our ATEM on here, grab our clamps, Go ahead and throw those in there, slot them in nicely, give them a little jiggle to make sure they're seated in their little spot. Then we'll go ahead and switch bits here. And I'll go ahead and tighten those up. Again, we have a bolt or screw and a washer. So that way we don't crack anything and take it easy here. You don't have to go crazy with these guys. And if the ATEM isn't fitting, that's because you probably snugged up this piece here and they're not able to move around because you want it to be able to be nice flush from this point to this point. And now we have our base ready to go into our case. And at this point, we could talk about what you need to do to your 1170 Pelican case. So let me set this aside for a second. Grab our Pelican case and talk about the mods. Now there's only one thing you have to do to get this to fit, and that is to make a cutout on the back of the case. And this cutout is going to be between this rear fin here and this fin here. So I'll go ahead and highlight what that looks like and where you need to cut. So again, we're gonna have a big cutting opening all the way through here. You can watch my original video to see how I cut that and how you could do that. Uh, you could use a jigsaw with a plastic cutting blade or just a handsaw like I did in that video. So I'm going to set this case aside and bring in our test case. Now there's a bunch of holes in this case. Don't worry about that. So this is our test case. We did a lot of gnarly things to test out and see what we could do with the A10 mini case originally. So really, again, if I flip it to the back, the only thing you need to do is make that cutout in the rear. So ignore this and those. This is all you have to do. If you want to, you can also make holes on the bottom to match the holes on the rear of this case here. So if I flip it over, you can see there are one, two, three, four mounting posts uh, or threads here that are brass 
brass inserts, so you could use uh, the included screws that are going to come with this thing. They're already pre-screwed in. You could just loosen them and not use them, uh, or drill the holes. If you aren't going to drill the holes, I would just recommend once you get this thing close to seated, add a little bit of super glue or hot glue, and you'll be good to go. So I've got the case open here. Obviously, our kit does not come with a display. You can use just a basic camera monitor or source some kind of panel to go here. So that's totally up to you. So now let's actually insert this bad boy into the case. So what you're gonna wanna do is angle it toward the bottom back so that this part of the case, that bump out sticks out through that hole we cut earlier. So I'm gonna line that up and just let it kind of fall into place here, just like so. At this point, I would recommend getting your screwdriver, loosening these four outside screws, as well as these four next to the power, so they can kind of shift around and you can just make sure everything's nicely seated together. So I already have them loose here. Things are feeling pretty good. We can fit the ATEM nicely, it's nice and flush, and um, there's no huge gaps around the outside of the case. There really shouldn't be. It's designed using CAD drawings to perfectly match uh, the inside of this case. So once you're happy with that, you can now go ahead and just go around and tighten things up. And honestly, you really don't have to use the screws on the bottom of this case. Again, I just love overbuilt stuff, so I overbuild everything I do. <laughs> so if you don't wanna use those screws, um, you know, a little bit of glue uh, would do the trick, but this is a pretty snug fit. Uh, the only reason I would want to maybe use the screws is if you're going to have a really expensive panel in the uh, you know, the lid of the case and you don't want this thing to potentially slide up and hit it. But once we get this nice and secure, it's pretty doggone in there. And at this point, it's going to be kind of difficult to get this back out. You need to remove the ATEM, kind of get in there and pull up. But yeah, a little bit of hot glue on the bottom would probably do the trick. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that's what the back looks like. I'll flip it around. You've got access to all your A10 ports here. Uh, you could fashion some kind of cover for this if you wanted to. I can grab my power connector here and go ahead and plug it right into the A10 and I still can access the uh, ethernet jack there. A little bit of glue in there might be you know, something you wanna do. Again, I'm just constantly overbuilding things and that's really it. So now you have an A10 mini case you slap any kind of monitor in the lid that fits and that you like, and you're good to go. So that is an overview of this DIY A10 mini case kit. You are gonna get everything you saw in this video. Uh, they're mostly going to be black. We have one special edition trooper white here. The only thing you may not get is going to be those filters. So these foam filters here, some cases are gonna have them, some are not, unfortunately. And then we'll also throw in some other random cables because you know, you can never have enough angled uh, power connectors and stuff like that. So you'll get all the cables and harnesses we talked about, but I'm also just gonna throw in some random stuff for you DIYers out there who may want just some extra hardware to work with. And that's gonna wrap up this overview video. If you wanna learn more about pricing and other stuff, check the information down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video.